I love you. Oh, how I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me. Hallelujah. In such a special way.
hands. Now, Lord Jesus, we come by your name one more time into this place. Then our feet cross the threshold. We brought a praise on our lips. We brought a song in our heart. Lord, we come to lift our hands and we come to bless your holy name. Oh, Father, glorify yourself tonight. Declare your name, Jesus, in the midst of your people. By stretching forth your hands to heal, deliver, and set free. Now, thank you, Lord, as I give myself over you as a conduit and an instrument for you to call your blessings on your people. In Jesus' name we pray. And let everybody say amen. amen. Get your Bibles tonight. We want to go to several passages of scripture. Just two for our foundation tonight. So we read one verse in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse number six and then we will turn our Bibles to first Samuel chapter four Isaiah chapter number nine and verse six declare for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the, and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Mm. Let's go to First Samuel chapter 4. Now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle and pitched beside Ebenezer on the fifth on and the Philistines pitched in Ephraim. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel. And when they joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines. And they slew of the army in the field about 4,000 men. And when the people were come in unto the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore had the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? Let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when it cometh among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemy. So the people sent to Shiloh that they may bring from thence the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth between the cherubims. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phineas, was there with the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. Hallelujah. Verse 10. And the Philistines fought, and Israel was smitten. And they fled every man 
into his tent. And they were very, and there was a very great slaughter. For there fell of Israel 30,000 footmen. And the ark of God was taken. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phineas, was slain. God bless you. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. The Bible said the prophets will see eye to eye. Hallelujah. His name is wonderful. Hallelujah. The story here for Samuel is a story of Israel, the nation of Israel, in some of her darkest days. Israel was chosen by God. In fact, Abraham, being a friend of God, God made a covenant with him. Yes. And through that covenant, and by that covenant, his, his children was blessed. Yes. His descendants would have been blessed. And so the people knew this. They knew that they were special. Because they were the seed of Abraham. And they knew that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. If God has spoken it, he will perform it. If God had declared he shall bring it to pass as the dew coming down from heaven as the rain fall to the ground so shall his word be that goeth forth out of his mouth it shall not return unto him void. it shall prosper it shall accomplish it shall perform which he sent it up to perform. Somebody give God praise for the word of your life. He made a promise to Simeon in the day of Jesus. He told Simeon and he covenanted with him and he said, Simeon, you shall not see death until your eyes behold the consolation of Israel. And at the time of Jesus being presented unto the Lord at the eighth day of his birth, the Bible said Mary and Joseph brought Jesus the babe up to the altar and the scripture says Simeon walked in the tabernacle the very same moment and the Bible said his spirit began to leap. His soul began to leap because his eyes had behold the manifestation of the word of the Lord. I'm here to tell you, you will not see death until God perform his word. For all the promises of God are yet. And amen. amen. Come on and say amen. amen. Israel knew they were special. Israel knew that she had the true 
and the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God told Moses to build a tabernacle. Amen. He said, so that my presence can dwell in the midst of my people. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, make thee an ark. And I want you to put in that ark, which was a chest. It was a chest. Yeah. Ark of a covenant was a chest. Yeah. A container. That's what it was. Yeah. And he said, Moses, overlay it with gold. Overlay it with gold. And on the lid of the chest, on the Ark of the Covenant, I want you to put a mercy seat. Yes. He said, and in the Ark, I want you to put the, the, the tables of spoon or the covenant yes. or the Ten Commandments in the Ark. Yes. Hallelujah. To Israel. The Ark of the Covenant was the symbol of the presence of God. Shana Bahosaya, just to be held up in the eyes, was to see the glory of the Lord. They couldn't even see it because it was covered. Come on and say amen. No man was, see, God, God was so, God, see, all of these things that you see that, uh, that, that, that was in the Old Testament is only types. And shadows. Amen. Everything has a symbolic meaning. Amen. Amen. The tabernacle Amen. and the materials out of which it was built have a purpose and symbolize something greater than which was to come. Amen. All the characters that God wrote about in the Bible, they are said they are types. Amen. Joshua was a type of Christ. Samuel was a type of Christ. Come on, somebody. Samuel was prophet and priest. Jesus was prophet, priest, and king. Oh, my God. David was prophet and king. Jesus was prophet, priest, and king. Come on, somebody. All of these things are types and shadows. But we are not living in the shadow now because that which is represented has come. to speak to you in dark sayings and mysteries and parables for Jesus said when you speak when I speak to you I will speak to you as I spoke to Moses a man speaking with his friend face to face when you look into the word of liberty when you look into the scriptures it is God talking directly to you you don't need no prophet you don't need no mediator God heard him say come and he said the power of the scriptures hallelujah transform your life for you will change from glory unto glory even as by the spirit of the Lord Israel knew this God's purpose for choosing Abraham and his descendants was to make of them a nation through whom he would have been glorified. That's the point that the chosen Israel, she wasn't just chosen because God loved her only. No! She was chosen because God had a purpose. God never do anything without having a divine plan, a divine purpose. You are created with a purpose. Israel, well, she had the covenant, she had, she had the ark, she had the glory, she had the promise, she had everything. But what she did not understand or fail to recognize is that all of 
the promise of God was depending on her conformity to his word. See, there's a lot of people who read the book. When I say the book, I'm talking about the Bible. And they read the promises that are made. And they just think that they are entitled to it. You're not just entitled. She just said of the woman, the I think the Sarah Phoenician woman who came to him with a sick daughter. And she said, My daughter is sick. You gotta heal her. I know you're able to heal her. He said, Woman, it's not me to give the children bread to dogs. She said, yes, Lord, you're right. But even the dogs eat up the crumbs yes. that fall from the master's table. You say, woman, great is your faith. Great is your faith. Come on, somebody, my daughter was here. He said, but the bread belongs to the children. The promises belong to the children. Come on, somebody. You can't be outside of the of of of, of a, and then the, 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 the privileges that you can enjoy as a citizen of America and in particular as a part of this this city, this state. I can't enjoy all of them. Because I'm a foreigner. There's certain privilege that are accessible to me but oh, I'm, I, can't be, I can't be treated like you come on somebody Amen. you first in line and I behind Amen. come on somebody Amen. right now if I go to the Bohemian Embassy in the, in the US which is in Atlanta, Miami or New York and all of you are in line because you need well let's say you need a visa to get to the Bahamas so you have to go to the embassy to get the visa I'm a Bahamian whatever the ambassador or those that represent the Bahamas in the US or in that place they can stop what they're doing and say that's a Bahamian come Oh, 
Israel abuse of privilege. It was contingent on her conformity to the work. She could have lived any life she chose to live. But the promises never change. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Let's look at the word. First Samuel 4. Now the word of the Lord, or the word of Samuel, came to Israel. Now, here, the word of the Lord is called the word of Samuel. He was a prophet. You see, when Samuel was called to the prophetic, he was a boy. He was a child considered in Israel. And that was against the law. Because you could not serve in the temple before you were slain. You have to be at least 30 years old before you enter into the service of the Lord. But God had to change the rules. God will change some rules to accommodate you. Amen. Don't worry about the rules. Rules are not permanent with God. Amen. Somebody to say amen. amen. The scripture said, now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle. Hmm? She went out. See, so now when the scripture said that and the word of the law of Samuel came to all Israel, what it is really saying was that the word and the prophetic that God used or spoke by the mother Samuel, the people was attacking him. See? A prophet is a spokesperson. That's all he is. He is a middleman or mediator. But why do you need a mediator when I can speak directly to you? Why do I need to send a messenger to get my word to Amen, Elder Richardson, when I can speak directly to her? But if I have spoken to Elder Richardson, but she behaved in a way that is contrary to what I said. You only say nothing. Amen. See, when you stop, when people start rebelling against God, what, what folks don't understand is you begin to move further and further and further and further. And the further you go, the less you can hear the voice. You can hear the voice that come less now. If you're not drawing closer, you're going further and further and further and further away until you come to a place of apostasy. Come on, somebody. You shake your head. Amen. You harden your heart. You stiffen your neck. God said unto Ezekiel, these people are obstinate. Obstinate mean they so backward and so rebellious in that you can do it. Israel was not hearkening. So God sent the prophet, go talk to them for me. Go talk to them here. Tell them they're making me mad. 
talking in the hidden dialect. I'm getting angry, and my anger's boxing hot. Warm down for me. Not in our problem, God is your problem. He's not the first in your problem. I am your problem. Yeah. Yeah. So listen, what the Bible says. Now Israel went out against the Philistine. Trouble come. Amen. See it? Trouble now. Amen. Trouble now. Amen. Everything is on the table. Your life, your children's life, everything now is at stake. Trouble come. Amen. Don't you say nothing? Amen. So in their mind, see what I see how they were thinking. Watch this. And see how you see. So the Bible said, watch this. And the Philistines pitch well, the battle and pitch beside Ebenezer. And the Philistines pitch in. Let's, let's read that again. Now Israel went out against the Philistines. I'm in the middle of this verse one. You see it? Amen. Now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle and pitch beside Ebenezer. And the Philistines pitch in Ephraim. Oh. <laughs> we are the children of Abraham. <laughs> we don't have to pray. We don't have to seek the face of God. Because we we entitled. He said he's going to be with us. He said he's going to work it out. He said no weapon formed against us can prosper. Thousands of souls over here, 10,000 over there. He said, Mom, Lord, God, with us. We ain't got to work with nothing. Let's get together and go and face those giants. Okay. Watch what the scripture said in verse 2. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel, and when they joined battle, Israel was spared. Yeah. 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 Lest we forget, it's the, they're the people of God. Yes. Yes. Lest we forget, they're the chosen of God. Yeah. Lest we forget, they're the redeemed. Yeah. I need a church in here. Lest we forget, they are the children of Abraham whom God made the covenant with, and the covenant was upon them. Somebody needs to say glory. But one day for God, hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. That with the covenant came responsibility. Israel was smitten. I like this part. I love this part. I love this part. And they slew of the army in the field about 4,000 men. You know what's 4,000 people? You know what's family that involved? Hallelujah. 4,000 men. There was a great cry. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. And when the people were come into the camp, they brought the report. Israel fled from before an enemy. Watch this, watch this. The elders of Israel said, Wherefore have the Lord smitten us today before the Philistine? Did you hear what they said? Amen. God. Yes. Are you the same God that made all those promises last? Are you the same God that told us that we are ahead and not the tail? Are you the same God that told us we are above and not beneath? Are you are the same God? Listen again to what they said. Why you did this? They just like I put the blame and lay it at God's feet. Why, Lord, you did this? Why? I love that question. Hallelujah. Because it tells me now they're seeking answers. Yeah. Why? Mm -hmm. God was speaking to them all the time. Yeah, God was warning them all the time. Yeah. Not because you didn't see any cloud, any rain clouds, or any sign of rain meant that the rain wasn't coming. The forecast has already told you. Look on rain today. The rain told you it's going to rain. 
I don't need no umbrella because the sky is clear. But the forecasters saw something you can't see. That's why Elijah said, I can hear something. I hear something. They all said, what you talking about? I don't hear nothing. The people of Israel said, what you talking about? I can't hear nothing. The servant said, what you talking about? I can't hear nothing. Elijah said, I hear a sound. Of an abundance of rain. They wasn't taking heed, paying no attention. Trouble come. This life, save or unsaved, we will never go without difficulties. There are going to come challenges. There are going to be mountains and hills. There are going to be some stumbling blocks. There are going to be some things to challenge your faith. There are going to be some things and then to weigh your soul down. I need a church in here. But the difference between those within and those without is that those without don't have no covering. Those that are within the Bible shed of them, he got credit in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadows of the almighty somebody to give god praise in this house come on give him praise now trouble come oh, what's this now the bible said israel was smitten before the philistines come on somebody and it says the elders of israel the elders who's the elders the elders were the leaders, the religious and civil leaders of the nation. They had the charge to watch over the nation and instruct the people in the way of the Lord, but they fail. The Bible said, like the people, like prophet and like priest. I need a church in here. He said, if the priest said, the priest failed me, then let the people fail me. He said, the prophet failed me. Those that handle the law don't know me. Hallelujah, Jesus. I can't talk to Eli. I can't talk to Hophni. I can't talk to Phineas. Let me go raise up some and the Lord came to Samuel by night and said, Samuel, the Lord have need of you. Somebody say glory. Somebody say glory. If you don't hear, you don't feel. See, we are in this world. And the Bible said, on the sixth day, God made the animals. And on the seventh day, and on the sixth day, and then on the last half of the sixth day, he made man. We all were made out of the dust of the earth. And after Adam sinned, or before Adam sinned, the Bible said the ground brought forth food, herds for food, and everything that was pleasant to the eyes. But after Adam sinned, the Bible said the ground brought forth thorns and thistles. Somebody need to say glory. The thorns and the thistles tell us hallelujah. It means trouble. It means trials. It means persecution. Come on somebody. We were made from the ground. So which the thorns and the thistles also grow from. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise. And so in this life, there will be trouble. In this life, there will be wars. In this life, there will be enemies. In this life, there will be sickness. There will be infirmity. There will be hunger. There will be pain. And in the church in here, but the Bible said, the name of the Lord is a strong power. And the righteous, they run in their way. And they are saved. Somebody give me a prayer. Hey, hey. Why? What's in the Smith? Let's go to Leviticus chapter 26. Watch this. Why? Let me tell you.
sickness is going to come. And not because you sin and sin in the law. Devil, you're not thank you. He's going to thank you. But you see, you got to remember the word of the Lord. Sex is going to come to, to, to take us out or to bitter us or drive us away from God. It comes to draw us closer to God. It comes to draw us closer. God wants you to get closer to Him. Everything has a purpose. Romans chapter 8 and 28, I believe, said, We nail all things. He said, And we know, and we know, and we know, and we know all things, all things, all things, working together for good. The dead that love God, the dead who are called according to his purpose. Somebody need to say glory. Somebody say glory. Amen. It's going to work for your good. Come on, somebody. The devil may be afflicting the body, but you got to let the devil know that God be the glory. God going to get the glory. And how God going to get the glory? He going to heal your body. I say he going to heal. Heal your body. He don't get the sickness. He don't get the glory in the sickness. He get the glory. Then you come out. Somebody say it. I don't want nobody to trouble me that I bear my body the marks I got the scars I got the mark come on somebody on this journey some of us may have to make it in on one foot some of us may have to make it in with one eye with one hand who is this I see in the distance coming? These are those, these are those that come out of great tribulation. These are those that come out of great trouble. These are those that come out of great trials. What the Bible said, lift up your head, all we case, and be lifted up. God can turn this into your favor. Yes. Isaac said, Father Abraham, I see the wood. I see the fire. But where is the sacrifice? The scripture said, Abraham said to his son with faith and confidence, Son, the Lord will provide him. The Bible said Abraham lifted up his hands to slay his son Isaac, and the angel of the Lord spoke out of heaven and said, For now I know you love me. Somebody say, yeah. Mother Richardson, the word of the Lord gonna try you. Mother, Mother Hamilton, the word of the Lord gonna try you. Sisters and brothers, the word of the Lord gonna try you. But when I have been tried, I will come forward as pure gold. He said, Abraham, now I know. Scorn at me. Yeah. 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 Scorn
saying that if speak speak reproachfully about my God but David said you don't know you want circumcised Philistine I'm going to take your head and give it I'm going to cut up your head and give your carcass unto the buzzard and the beast of the field the Bible said David was entrusted in horse and chariots David was entrusted in spare or sword but the writer said I will trust in the name of the Lord and David Slew the Philistine, stood on his head, took it off. Somebody can't grow. Which I never did in the head. Bible said he took the head of the Philistine giant, their champion, and he took it into the city. He look at the army of the Philistines and say, here is the head of your child. God will make a way for you. Somebody believe that tonight. Let's watch Leviticus 26 and 14. Well, it's what he says. But if ye will not hearken on me. You hear that? You know we like to quote Deuteronomy 28. And we quote the first 14 verses. Less in the city. Less in the field. Less in your going out. Less in your coming in. Less in your rising up. Blessing you dying down. You're gonna be blessed, 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 blessed. Somebody said, turn around and all I see is bless. <laughs> but they don't read further. He said, but if ye will not, we want the bread, we want the blessings, we want the benefits, we want it. Let me see God bless us and courage that is encouraging us. When God bless us and motivates us. When God move on our behalf, my God, it makes you strong and safe. It gives you more confidence for tomorrow. So when the next enemy show up, and then you can say the same God yesterday. It's the same God today. And he's the same God forever. He did it yesterday. And today he gonna do it even more. Somebody say glory. I love when God move. I always praise God. Move for your people. If you only give them a little taste. If you only give them a little shake. If you only give them a little touch. If they can only see the wind move. And feel it blowing over their body. And they know it is you. Lord, they be confident in the midst of their trouble. They will be confident in the midst of their trials. Somebody give him glory. Somebody give him glory. They will be confident. They will grow even stronger. I said, Lord, move. Show up, Lord. Move. But if you don't ask him, I don't understand some preachers. Why they can't preach that? I just don't understand it. Let me explain something. In the best way I can articulate it by the Spirit of the Lord. You don't need to be told about the blessings. Because the blessings are sure. Promise and the, and the word of the Lord is sure. Yes, yes. And having this seal, the Lord know them that are his. Amen. Amen. What you have to be careful of is the pitfalls. Yes, yes. The dangers. Yes, yes. The things that will cause you to forfeit the blessings. Yes. The things that will bring you out of favor with the blessings. Yes. Those are the things you gotta be wary of. Yes. Yes. Whoever the blessings, they come in. Thank you, Lord. They come in. Yes. 
I saw some people pray about food and clothes and material things and this and that. And they never try to build their relationship with God. Amen. Don't worry about the blessing. Amen. Don't worry about the blessing because they are sure. Yes. That which he has in his hands, no man can pluck it out. Amen. No hoodoo. You ain't got to worry about no voodoo. Amen. No witchcraft. You know what they say, Folks working on the hand, burning candles. Amen. You can put my name in the graveyard. I need a church in here. I need to hear lies. Can't touch me. Can't touch me. The law of the wicked will not rest upon the law of the righteous, lest the righteous stretch forth his hand into iniquity. Don't worry about the blessing. Don't worry about the blessing. They're coming. And God knows exactly what you need. Yes, he does. I did not say don't pray for that. You can make your request known on the law, unto the law. Bring all your burdens and cast them on the law. What are you losing your sleep for? Why are you so troubled and tell you can't even, you can't even relate no more. Amen. People go in a dark corner and stay in that corner and just let the devil feed their minds and all of a sudden they're talking, but I don't want to live. Amen. I don't want to live. Life, is, life ain't fair. You ain't special. I say you ain't special. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We all must great. We all must through great tribulation. Yes, God. You gotta go through it. Yes, Lord. He didn't just send half of Israel to the business. He sent all of them. Yes, Moses, you go too. Amen. Miriam, Aaron, y'all too. All y'all go. Yes. Because the wilderness is the path to the promised land. And he said to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 4, between 4 and 6, he said, remember all the way that the Lord brought you through the wilderness. He tried you with hunger, he tried you with thirst to see whether or not you will obey him. Amen. Tell somebody it's under your task. That's all it is. That's all it is. Give him praise and God. But he will, but if he will not hearken, I'm still in 16, 26 and 14, Lua, the Vicus. But if he will not hearken unto, the, unto me, unto me, who me? God. Not a preacher, not a prophet. Sometimes we think because people don't see us, the preacher don't see us. We come to church and because the preacher, amen, praise God, don't pick us up and put us out and, amen, reprove and rebuke us right in the midst of the congregation. We say the preacher blind, the preacher dumb, the preacher deaf, the preacher ain't got no God, the preacher backslide. What happened to God? He blind and deaf too? Uh, God dumb too? Why he ain't do something about it? Trying to get your attention in a good way. He said, watch this now. I will not do all these commandments. Look at verse 17. Same, same chapter. And I will set my face against you. Some people live in a life of wretchedness, riotness. Live in all kind of Wicked, ungodly, sinful life. Hallelujah. And they know what they're doing. Hallelujah. And when God turns a face against them, they say people waking something on them. Yes. That devil, this and the devil, that. Well then, what I have to do with it? 
Yeah, the devil is this and the devil is that. But what do I have to do with my situation? Amen. Watch this. And I will set my face. Can't you? Man, David said, Lord, you chasing me. I don't want man chasing me. You with me because I know you as a compassionate God. You will have mercy on me. But man is cruel. Man is vicious. Man is ungodly. I'd rather fall in the hands of God than to fall in the hands of man. I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. Do you see that? Yes. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee from, you shall flee when no, none pursueth you. Amen. See that? Amen. See that? See, we read, we read, but we don't, we read, and then see, sometimes we have selective hearing and selective reading. We read this chapter and then only the good part uh, 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 speak to us. Yes. Only the good part speak to us. So those the, the, the text and the scripture we take out. God say, God say, God say, God say, God say. I bless, I bless, I'm favor, I'm favor. I think I read this. This is what you need to read. Imagine the kind of terror and the kind of fear that be old men when they see death. Oh, yes. As bad and as bold and as forward as they are, I'll kill you, I'll do this and I'll do that. But the moment the barrel is turned the next way, and the witness in their fear take a hold of them. I need someone to help me get God praise. Fear take a hold of them and they start calling for God. But God's not gonna laugh at your calamity, and I'm gonna mock you when your fears come. You because when I want you, you wasn't listening. When I call you, you wasn't paying no attention. Now let your God deliver you. If Israel had obeyed God, she would never have been defeated. You hear that? If Israel had obeyed God, she never would have been defeated. Look at the fifth verse. Look at chapter 8 and verse 5. No, no. 26 and 8. Look at verse 8 of chapter 26. Come on, watch this. Amen. Chapter 26 and verse 8. Oh my God, right. Eh? Look at verse 8. What was that? And five of you shall chase what? And a hundred of you shall chase what? About 10,000 to flight. Do you see that? And your enemies shall fall before you by the what? You see that? Amen. Did, did you see that? Amen. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32 and 30. Watch what it says. He said, Now shall one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight. Did you see that? Did you, did you see that? Yes. So why is it Israel was defeated before her enemy? Because Israel forsook her God. You don't think she was still bringing the sacrifice to the altar or to the tabernacle? Don't you think she was praying at the hours 
and times of prayer a day? Don't you think she was in service and praising God and worshiping God and, and shouting hallelujah and glory to God? Don't you think many of them was in the choir and the deacon and the evangelist and the pastor and the prophets and the apostles and the bishop? You don't think they were still doing what they knew how to do? What am I saying? Some people going to hell right out of the church. Some people go into hell right out of the house of God. That's why you can't be judging people. You can't be determining who going to heaven and who going to hell. And then be looking at people and be saying, oh, they look like me, oh, they dress like me, oh, they act like me, oh, they look like me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, praise God. But God says, Samuel, and then praise God, don't look at his statue, don't look at his height, don't look at his face, don't look at his muscles, don't look at his shoulder. I want you to look, see it the way God God see it. God don't see like man see. God searches the heart. The people who be taken will be in heaven. He ain't going there. And in a church in here. And some people are just going to make it in by the skin of the teeth. Somebody say glory. What you should be worrying about. Lord help me to make it in. Help me, help me to get in. Help me to cross the threshold. When death come to take away. Let the angel of the Lord take my soul to be with the Lord. That's what you should be worrying about. Don't worry about your neighbor. Don't worry about your sister. Don't worry about your brother. You try to get in for her. And somebody said, I feel like pressing. I feel like pressing. I feel like pressing beyond the mark of the high calling. Somebody say it. Pray God. He will place upon you a pressing anointing. Press beyond the obstacles. Press beyond the stumbling block. Press beyond your trials. Press beyond your persecution. Press beyond your affliction. Press. 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 Wind it down. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Oh. The other said, why? Why is because you um, wasn't treating God right? That's why. Amen. That's why you wasn't treating God right. Amen. People know in the heart what they're doing. Yes. People know the heart how they live living. Yes. You can try to fool bishop and fool the pastor and fool everybody but you know you can't fool God Amen. because the Bible that the spirit bear witness with his spirit our conscience gone gonna reprove us and our punches is gonna prick us and our punches is gonna rebuke us but I'm here to tell you if you mess with your conscience too much and play with the word of God too much the Bible said you can say your conscience you can destroy your conscience I need somebody to hear me and now what was seen yesterday what was wrong yesterday what was wicked and ungodly yesterday today it don't affect me because I can do it. God have mercy. Gonna preach to somebody here because I want to be in it. It ain't wrong no more. Because I want to do it. It ain't wrong no more. Somebody need to hear me. Glory to God. Somebody need to know. Lord have mercy. Have a clear conscience. Have a good heart. Don't let your conscience die. Because if your conscience die, you will become a poor state. And the Bible says, God will give you over to a reprobate mind to do those things that are inconvenient. Somebody better hear me. I don't know about 
keep your conscience alive. As long as your conscience is alive, God can deal with you. Because your conscience is the means by which God speaks to me. God speaks to me through, his con through my conscience. And so, when I do wrong, and we all be in there. We all go in there someday. Our conscience can break us. See, that's why David said, don't take the Holy Spirit from me. Yes. Because as long as the Spirit of God is with me, God going to reprove me. Yes. God going to correct me. Yes. Somebody to say amen. Yes. And then, I'm able to reconcile. Yes. Get myself together. Yes. Come on, see, that's why you see some people go and come, go and come. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. They go and come in the Bible says, listen, it is not the will of God that any man sin. Amen. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Somebody shout hallelujah. And the scripture said that we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Lord, don't destroy or don't allow me to destroy my conscience. If you have a conscience, you know how to say sorry. If you have a conscience, you know how to say I'm wrong. Yes. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Your conscience would, allow, would not allow you to sleep. Yes. It would trouble you. Yes. I gotta come to you, sister. I gotta come. Yes. The people who destroy their conscience will tell you, I don't know what you're talking about. Yes. Amen. Yes. Saying neck, what you got stick up in the air. Mm -hmm. God know how to bring your head down. Yes. He says, listen quickly. He said, the boy says, and when the people who are coming to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Where for had the Lord smitten us today before Israel? Let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us that when it come among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemy. Yeah. Mm. Oh my God. Hallelujah. The ark came in the midst of them. But what they did not recognize was that the ark of the covenant called God into remembrance of their sin. Because in the ark of the covenant was called agreement with them. He said, These are my commandment and thou shall not somebody need to say glory thou shall not so they thought that the ark of the covenant which is only a mere symbol of the glory of God it was not the ark that was important it was what was in the ark the ark is only a chest a container a whole the word God. Somebody say glory. And so when they brought the ark of the covenant in the midst of them, they called God to their sins. And the Bible said they began to shout, God is with us. Emmanuel is with us. But what they did not know, they meant the sin their sins yet stood before God and God couldn't do nothing except he deal with the sin somebody say glory God can't do nothing except he deal with our sins God can't do nothing except he get rid of sin sin is a problem sin is a hindrance sin is a stumbling block sin will make you an enemy of God
sin. Yeah. So they brought the ark of the covenant and they said, look at here, look at here. God is with us now. My God, the Bible said they began to shout. My God, the earth began to shake. The mountains, the ground began to tremble. Then the Philistines heard the sound. They got afraid. They said, what mean this sound? What, 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 what? Somebody said, oh, oh. The Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the God of Israel is in the camp. Somebody say glory. But when the Philistines didn't know, that was only empty religion, empty shout, empty praise. What the Philistines did not know, amen, it was empty, empty, empty. Amen, God was not with them. They only had a shake, but the bird that flee the limb. They only had a shake, but God already left Samson. They only had a shake. Somebody say amen. They shout up yesterday. They shout up day before yesterday. But God has said, what about our relationship now? I know what I did two years ago. I know what I did ten years ago. But how do you see me now? Somebody say glory. Who wants to see this house in a form of glory? Tell me how do you see it now? God is not worrying about yesterday. He's worried about now. Somebody say glory. For the wages of sin is still intact. But the gift of God is eternal life. Somebody throw your hands in the air and show glory. unclean place. Amen. You might as well confess this. Your praise ain't no good. Amen. Your worship ain't no good. Amen. You're running and holding your head and falling down and turning over. Clap gut ain't no good. Then you don't pray. Then the preacher doesn't pray for you and you fall down and you get up. God say, walk right. Live right? Amen. Do right? Yes. When he came into the world, Hebrews died, 8, 9, 10, 11, down there. Says, he said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. Yes. For it is written of me, O Lord, to do thy will. Amen. The will of God for man. He took it and hid it in the book. Amen. Amen. Don't he say nothing? Amen. And he said further, a body has thou prepared me. Yes. That's what God wants. He wants a body. Yes. And how do, you, how do you prepare your body? Through the book. Yes. Amen. The book teaches us. The book instructs us. The, the book counsels us. The book guides us. Yes. It gives us Step by step number 12, point in 
eight points and somebody talks about nine points and 24 points. I don't know, steps and the rest of it. But listen, all you got to do is present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Can God your body? He said, your body is the temple, Amen. not this building. This houses the place we come for corporate worship. Yes. But God is saying, I'm here because you're here. I want your body. For the body is not for fornication. The body is for the Lord. Amen. Fornication is a twofold sin. Amen. You sin against your spirit and you sin against your body. Amen. Adultery is when you are having infidelity with someone that is out your husband or just without who has got your spouse. That's a threefold sin. Amen. God call that abomination. Yes. Sin against your spirit, you sin against your body, and you sin against your neck. Amen. The Bible said, don't defraud him. Amen. He's entitled. Amen. Don't defraud her. She's entitled. Amen. You don't have no power over your body but your husband. And you don't have no power over your body but your wife. Don't defraud one another. Amen. God wants your body. And if you do that, if you give God your body, read it. Romans 4, 6, 7, 8. Read it. Your body is the temple of the living God. He said, no, you're not. No, you're not. Your body is the temple of the living God. And the temple of the Lord God is holy. What if you walk in here one day, and I'm about to quit, and you see, <laughs> you see, Mother, I'm going to take the pimples on. And she got her pom pom shorts on, mm -hmm. sitting on the pulpit, smoking a cigarette and drinking her Hennessy. Mm -hmm. And then you see the deacons and everybody dressed in their, in their worldliness. And instead of the organ, you got the bar set up over there. Everybody got their glass. You ask, what kind of place is this? Amen. Amen. See no church? Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And people will go around here with their head on fire. <laughs> you think they can do that? They got to do that to the church. Did you read what they were doing in the church? You are you here? How 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 about the I'm living in the rest of them living in the church? Great God of money, that's God house. God say not so. Because this is my house. This is my house. The spirit of God dwelling in you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm about to quit. But I just want to read this with you before I come. You can never please God with this in right. Every sin that a man committed is without the body. But if a man commits some fornication, he sin against the body. Take care of this. Take care of this. This is what you should be concerned about. Live holy. Amen. Live clean. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever you do, you pray. You pray, God give me the strength. God give me the wisdom. God give me the know-how. Lord, how to walk before you uprightly. How to sanctify myself and keep my body holy. Yes, and 
everything else could fall in place. Because the fight of the body is the hardest thing to deal with. That's the worst one. Is that? That's the worst one. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet. Oh, I gotta cut my shoulder short because of that. All right, thank you. Lift your hands. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary.
physical infirmities. Your physical infirmities. I will So I'm gonna grab a hold of this word tonight. Shut up, open your heart and sing it. I The Lord just spoke to me and said, touch everybody, come. Touch everybody, come. Let me touch you quickly. Let me touch you quickly. Come. 